Welcome everyone. In this video, we'll be learning about asymptotic analysis. We'll first understand some rules and then we'll see some examples. So rule number one, we always consider the highest rate of growth. This is the most important rule. For example, if an algorithm has a function f of x is equals to n cube plus 2n square plus 500. So we are gonna say that the time complexity of this algorithm is n cube. Or another example, let's say f of x is equals to 8n square by 3 plus 200n plus 1000 is equivalent to n square. So we are gonna say that the time complexity of this equation is n square. So this rule basically says that we only consider the highest degree of the expression and we neglect the remaining equation. So you might yell at me saying that this analysis is completely wrong. It doesn't give us the right answer. And now you should ask me why. Why do we do such analysis? And the answer is performing a precise worst case analysis is a very difficult task because running time depends on various factors such as processing power, the way in which code is written or language use. So asymptotic analysis is not about finding the exact time complexity. It's about finding the behavior of algorithms. Let's understand this point in more detail. Suppose we have two functions n square plus 100n plus 500 and n square. So according to rule 1, time complexity of both these functions is n square. Now we'll plot a graph of these two functions. On x axis we represent the number of input values and on y axis we represent the time. Now as you can observe in the graph, you might say that these two graphs are different than each other. They have a huge gap, their behavior is completely different. Now let's increase our input size. This graph has max input as 100. Let's see how our graph behaves for higher input. Now you can observe for higher inputs our both graphs behave similar. Their behavior is same because these both are quadratic algorithms. I hope you have understood the rule 1. So linear algorithms are just straight line. Quadratic family have a bit curve. Now this is a cubic family. Even for small inputs, they take a huge time. So if we sum up all these families in one graph, the graph will look like this. So these are, we can say that the categories of algorithms. Logarithmic algorithms are the best performing. So now you are understood why do we focus on the higher degree or deriving factor in an expression. So this is the real definition of asymptotic analysis. Asymptotic analysis is understanding the behavior of algorithms. I hope that we are now clear with rule 1. Now let's move forward to rule number 2. All the basic mathematical operations such as addition, multiplication or division or even assigning value to variable takes constant time because in detail they are just changing the values in registers which depends on machine performance. So we consider all these operations takes constant time. Rule 3 is about loops. The running time of a loop is at most the running time of statements inside the loop multiplied by the number of iterations. For example, this for loop which goes from 0 to n. So inside this loop we are doing an addition operation which take constant time and the loop will iterate n times. So our time complexity is constant multiplied by n. So by our rule 1 it's only n. Now the next rule, rule number 4 is for nested loops. 
so the total running time is the product of all iterations of all loops that means we multiply the iterations of each loop and that gives us the total complexity for example here we have a nested loop so the outer loop iterates n times and the inner loop also iterates for n times and we have one addition statement which is constant so time complexity is going to be c multiplied by n which is outer loop multiplied by n which is inner loop so which is equal to n square as we know constants so our time complexity is n square so this is rule 4 now rule number 5 is for consecutive statements usually we don't have a single for loop in our code so in this code sample we have a loop a single statement and a nested loop so what is the time complexity of this code so for such consecutive statements we add the complexity of each statement so the first loop iterates for n times so n plus we are doing one additional operation so it will take constant time that is c plus a nested loop that is n square so by our first rule we know that time complexity for this equation is n square so this was rule number 5 now our last rule which is for logarithmic complexity it's just a for loop can you calculate it time complexity this loop will terminate when value of i is greater than n but each time the value of i doubles here so it will start from 2 to the power 1 plus 2 to the power 2 plus 2 to the power 3 and go on it doubles every time so let's us assume that that loop will execute k times so at the kth step 2 power k equals n because that's our loop condition and that means that for the next step k plus 1 step we came out of the loop so taking log on both sides and solving this equation further the answer is log n so this loop will take log n time so that's it guys in this video we learn about six rules for doing a synthetic analysis in the next video we'll solve problems on it that's it guys i hope you enjoyed this video please do comment i really like to read your comments and please support code archery by liking this video